Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Has 27 members. Hi guys, originally the video in the description right below. I link to the Discord. Click on this intro right over there. Let's go. Of the insane plan to divide Europe in 1920, the Central European Union. General knowledge. Great channel. Hello. Let's go. Let's learn. Today, the European Union has. My name's Connor, by the way, if you're new. 27 member states, although you could also phrase this as it has 27 member countries. This differentiation is important because the EU was created as an extra organization that countries are a part of together. It wasn't created to replace national identities with a single European one. Although some people do want the EU to move towards that, becoming more a federal model, but that's not what this video is about. I mentioned this because if the EU had been created from scratch, taking on the concept of a single European country, as are the United States, perhaps a territorial reorganization would have taken place on the internal level as well. I'm not saying social values don't differ a lot in the US, they do. Um, but yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Oh, you will? Thanks. The I'll react to that, sure, is, uh, is, um, my other video I was uploading. I know that confuses people sometimes. Um, what was I going to say? Dang it. Oh, so taking it further than it is, you know, the European Union in terms of toward a more like national model or like country model, kind of like the United States model um, where, you know, there are states rights and everything, but a federal government. The problem with a federal type government is you have so many different languages, you have so many different cultures, you know, religious ideologies. Um, well, it'd be heavily Christian and atheist, I would think. But um, all the different languages, it just it it seems like taking it further. I I just don't know if. The European cultural diversity and way of life it, it would would make that a very good idea, but uh, what do I know? Just my thoughts. With member states' territory being reorganized to suit some type of administrative convenience. So, what if this had happened? In 1920, envisioning a project that would allow Europe to live in peace, a pretty crazy idea was presented. I got the information about this from a great article that I'll link in the description. The main goal seemed to be to assure peace, but also to assure that Germany would be divided. Their solution divide all of Europe along with it, but also united under a single state. According to this insane plan that was published in a pamphlet, most of Europe's mainland, essentially Central Europe, would be ruled in a unitary state with... What does that say? Banked Stefan? its capital in Vienna, which would be renamed Union Capital St. Stephen. Vienna... Oh has a St. Stephen's Cathedral. Maybe that's where the name came from. St. Stephen is a Christian martyr and the religious symbol of the city. In this union, old European countries would essentially be dissolved with its old borders going away. Instead, a set of straight line triangles radiating from the capital of old Vienna would define the 24 cantons that would make up this new union. The purpose was precisely to ignore the member countries' different identities, languages, religions, and people, removing their own national identities and forcing them to create a new one together, avoiding the disputes that arise from differences. I'm sure this would have gone really well. Their new flag would reflect this territorial organization. Exactly. Uh, easier said than done. And is he just choosing Vienna because it's it's the center? Um, and uh, there's no way Switzerland would ever want to stop being Switzerland, I would think. Any Swiss out there? Um... And, and, and yeah, the borders look nice, but it doesn't take into account any sort of cultural, national differences. And I guess that's the point, to send a message of, hey, it's just these straight lines for one people now. You guys have been fighting for how long? Like 4,000 4, years? 3,000? Well, forever. And uh, uh, maybe, but I have my doubts.
formation, resembling the current flag of the Seychelles with its radiating lines, which I believe represent the colors of the flags of countries that would become a part of it. In its center would be a group of hands holding each other, symbolizing cooperation between the people, and an alternative version shows what appears to be Saint Stephen himself. So much I hate is a strong word. I hate that flag. That is the most aesthetically unpleasing flag I have ever seen. Just make something more cool, like the European Union flag. I'll, you know, keep the blue. Much for removing the and just like put a map of the European Union in the middle. Important version shows what appears to be Saint Stephen himself. So much for removing the importance of religious differences. Sorry, guys. I gotta make sure I'm in. You can see me, right? Here I am. Yeah, see, I'm out there. Okay, I can do that. Okay, I was just checking in to look at myself, make sure I'm in camera. Okay, go. When you name the capital Saint Stephen and use the religious figure in your flag. The Central European Union would exclude European areas that are, in part, today a key part of the EU, such as all of Scandinavia, only Norway isn't a member today, Ireland and the UK, Spain and Portugal. Northern Italy would join, but the center wouldn't, being transformed into a papal state. Here we can really tell how this was biased towards Christianity. The Russian Empire would also stay out, remaining with its eastern. European that would absolutely cripple the economy of Italy, would it not? Because isn't the north of Italy really the the the, the powerhouse in Italy? In possessions, it's odd that the author of the would also stay out, remaining with its eastern Europe towards Christianity. The Russian Empire would also stay out, remaining with its eastern European possessions. It's odd that the author of the idea idealized the Russian Empire existing in 1920, given that the revolution that created the USSR right? had already happened yeah. in 1917. You think it was A few be other re independent reversed? states would remain out of the Union Bulgaria? too, such as Bulgaria, Greece, which would gain Sicily and southern Italy, but not be awarded any part of Thrace, which it holds today this is really chaotic it's unfortunate i couldn't find the full pamphlet for the video it would be interesting to try and chaos i don't think greece likes this map i think they want a lot of those turkish islands as well or greek aegean islands chaotic. it's unfortunate I couldn't find the full pamphlet for the video. It would be interesting to try and understand if there was some type of justification for how these independent states would be organized. Serbia and Albania would be united into a single state. We all know how well they get along, while the rest of the Balkans would be divided among the cantons. The Balkans literally caused the war they had just gotten out of. How could anyone think it would be a good idea to divide them? Not to get too deep into the causes of World War One, but I think that yeah, okay, fine, they did, but I I don't think they yeah, okay okay with straight lines and join serbia and albania together also why would parts of serbia be inside cantons while others were not there really doesn't seem to be any logic to the plan and it almost seems like satire in addition the three entry points to the mediterranean would be turned into neutral zones the suez gibraltar and Ceuta, and constantinople including the dardanelles likely managed by the league of nations or some type of organization like that this was actually a why is it called Constantinople instead of Istanbul? Part of some peace proposals at this time, but never really happened in these locations. The control of the Bosphorus and Dardanelles Straits was actually proposed to be under international mandate under the Treaty of Sevres, also in 1920, a very aggressive treaty which completely dismantled the Ottoman Empire and gave even land in Turkey to European powers. It was never put into effect due to how extreme it was, being replaced by the more reasonable Treaty of Lausanne in 1923. The British Empire held the Suez and Gibraltar and if they weren't a part of this union and weren't a defeated power of the war, why would they ever give up control over them? The same goes for Spain with Ceuta. The author of the plan was P. A. Maas, based in Vienna. The proposal was published in a pamphlet which also criticized the Treaty of Versailles, seeing it as an obstacle to lasting peace. Here he had a reasonable point, but his proposal, while good in concept, uniting Europe, failed in the way in which it was proposed, and would likely cause even more trouble than the Treaty of Versailles. Versailles, especially in countries that came from the old Austro-Hungarian Empire and the Balkans, eager to have their independence and national identity, but in this case seeing them 
themselves forced to be a part of yet another union. In the pamphlet, he wrote, the nation states are definitely torn apart, but they are joined together under one roof by creating sub-regions in which all nations are fused. Each of the cantons was to be named after its chosen capital city. Odessa. In the original map, we can see each of these. Munich, Paris, Berlin, Geneva, Budapest, Warsaw, among others. Oh, I'm so stupid. Canton. Okay. Some making very little sense, like Marseille being the capital of the Northern Italy Canton, just because it happens to be a part of it. Can I just be honest? This looks like a ridiculous idea, <laughs> and it just looks like someone would be, someone just like drew like, hey, wouldn't this be cool? And in like 10 seconds just drew, oh, the center around like, ooh, uh, Austria, or uh, Vienna in Austria. And then just all these pizza slices. Like, wouldn't that be awesome? Like, it looks like that is how much thought and no more went into this. Why not Venice or Milan? The capital of Vienna wasn't a cat. What do I know, okay? I, I'm, I'm no expert. But rather a circle. Why not Venice or Milan? The capital of Vienna wasn't a canton, but rather a circle territory at the center of the Union's map. Apparently, he actually wanted to build a circular wall around it with 24 gates that led into each of the cantons. <laughs> Despite the division into 24 cantons, the Union would recognize only four constituent nations Romans, Germans, Slavs, and Magyars. The first three of these were to be subdivided Magyar. into different peoples. This this makes no sense. He wanted to merge everyone, but then these specific people get a specific status. Also, why join these countries? This is getting more ridiculous. But leave out Southern Europe and Scandinavia. If the proposal was to be this complete utopia scenario, why not include all of the continents? He also proposed that all colonies of these former countries were to be united and managed together. Granted, most of these countries had no colonial empire. Right? I bet you France and Britain would be like, screw that. This would essentially mean a joining of the colonial empires of France, the Netherlands, Belgium, and Germany if German colonial losses in Versailles were reverted. This, 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 this is such a fever dream scenario, it's insane. And then all the colony, like, it, it's, it seems like someone just brainstormed this, like, oh, wouldn't this be nice? And then, like, that's all the thought that went into it. I, uh, yeah. This is the least nuanced plan I have ever seen. Belgium and Germany, is if German the right colonial word? losses in Versailles were reverted. In terms of government, the Union president would serve a term of three years, and the presidency would rotate between the four nations recognized by the Union, a measure that would defeat the supposed purpose of the Union. How can you bring everyone right. together? So everyone's together, but the president can only come from these four places. Like, uh, if these four national identities have superior political rights, all people over 20 would have to vote. Esperanto was to be the common language of the union. Esperanto is a language created by Varso based ophthalmologist Zamenhof in 1887. It was intended to be a universal second language for the international community, but it never really caught on. Like we saw, these would be the national flags of the union, but each can would also have its own flag, all following the same template and using the colors of wherever the capital city was located. Despite giving out his initials and last name, the author didn't want to reveal his identity when publishing the pamphlet. In it, he also stated, Someday, though late, the knowledge of truth will gain the upper hand, and perhaps many things which have been simulated by me will be realized. I guess he did have a point here. Some of the concepts stipulated by him were realized a European community was created and evolved into a European Union, but with much less nonsense. You can't give him credit for uh, He was created. He, I'm sorry, I, this guy's uh, evolved in. Yeah, it, it's nothing close to what he pictured. To a European Union, but with much. Am I being too harsh? Am I sounding like a, a, 
a dick or less nonsense than his proposal, maintaining countries' borders, not favoring any nationality above others, and allowing countries all over Europe to join. That is perhaps one of the weirdest parts of this proposal. Not only did he want to design a European Union, but he also wanted to design how the rest of Europe outside of it would exist, attempting to replace the terms of the Peace of Versailles. Regarding his identity, he stated, I have informed a notary of my name, profession, and role as author and editor of this work of peace, and it will be announced only when the four principal nations in the Union have expressed their judgment publicly. As far as I know, this proposal was never really taken seriously, nor do I think it ever will, so it seems we will never get to know the full identity. So that is the insane 1920 plan of one man to divide Central Europe into pie slice shaped territories, creating a Central European Union, claiming to serve the purpose of eliminating national and religious differences, but favoring Catholicism and four specific nationalities. Putting aside this crazy proposal, do you think an internal territorial reorganization in the EU would make sense, or is it good as it is, with each country having its own original territory? And do yes. you know of any other proposals of this kind to create a different looking European Union? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge. Awesome video as always. I, those flags terrify me. Great video. Um, let me know what you guys think uh, down in the comments. I hope you're all doing well. If not, you'll be good soon. Don't worry. Bye, guys.